Hello, Lena. How are you doing today? All right, we are going to continue with our lessons on grammar. And today we'll make sure we complete or finish the classes of now. So as usual, I previously or in our previous lessons we discussed or revised common nouns, proper nouns, counts and non-count nouns. Today we are going to look at concrete and abstracts and then we look at collective nouns. There are other classes of nouns but these are the ones that we are limited to as you go higher and learn the other ones. So today, quickly, let's move on to concrete and abstract nouns. When we talk about concrete nouns, concrete nouns are common nouns that can be seen and touched. So you see, I specify common nouns, which means anytime you want to identify a concrete noun, you have to ask yourself, is this now a common noun? Then you identify it as a word, a concrete word now. So, and can, can it be touched or feel? Because don't forget, we said festival is a common noun, but can we touch and feel festival? No, so we will list festival as a concrete noun, that's what I meant. But table, yes, it is a common noun. Can we touch and see table? Yes, so we can touch. Therefore, we pick table as a concrete noun. So this is how you identify them, and when you also want to use it, that is how you use them in the same Regard. And because we have retired common nouns, it means they don't begin with capital letters in the middle and at the end, unless they are the beginners of that sentence. Alright, let's go abstract nouns. Abstract nouns are that names. Abstract nouns are nouns. Nouns that names a situation or condition in human life. So, sometimes we face certain conditions and we, I mean, we find ourselves in situations. So, these situations, the names that we give to them, that's what refers to as what? Abstract down. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that for them, they cannot be touched. But it's normally expressed in the form of a situation or condition. One example is fear, happiness, love, loyalty, and so on. So, all these words are nouns. But because they only describe situations and conditions, but we cannot touch them, then they are abstract now. So you should be able to identify them as at when. For them to, unless they are beginning the sentence, they do not begin with capital letter. So in the middle, small letter, in the end, small letter, but at the beginning, capital. Then the last one here is collective now. As the word collective goes, they should be in a word, a group. So they are nouns that name a group of persons, animals, or things. So if you have a group of persons and you want to describe them, then you use these nouns. When you use them, then you see like different words, collective nouns. So as you learned in your earlier class, for instance, if you are going somewhere, you step out there and you get to a lorry station, you see people gathered. So a nice way to express that is say, oh, look at a crowd of people. So the word crowd in there, describe the people together as collective. The same way, if you see cattle, normally we normally see them when they are feeding. So when you see them feeding, then you mention them as what? A herd of cattle, which means that a herd describes them together. So that makes it a collective form. Then, if you go to church, always those who sing at church, they refer to as choir or the singers, they sing together. So them being together, we collectively call them a choir of singers. So it goes on. The same way if you see books packed together, then we describe as what? A library of what? Books. So what we are trying to say collective nouns, they give collective names to things that are seen in group or that are being described or named in groups over there or at that moment. So basically that is it. So these are the class of nouns we have looked at. What I'm going to you to do is that like we did in our previous lessons, we are identifying common nouns, proper nouns, and count and uncounter in paragraphs. So I'm going to give you another paragraph that is supposed to identify these ones in there for me. If you're able to identify them, you know how they are used so that you can also what, apply them. So that's the first step to the application of what? Nouns in text. So take it serious and identify them well. You want to identify them, you learn how the writer of that paragraph used it. Therefore, when you're also going to use it, you can also what? Use it very well and correctly. Alright, so I think basically that is it. 
We end our lesson here today and I'll see you in our next lesson.